Good afternoon. It's nice to be here. Uh, how's it going, Defcon, so far? You guys enjoying it? Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, so when, when, when we're thinking about the, the recon, uh, I, I used to do a lot of uh, open source intelligence. Um, so I thought, okay, let's, let's take another approach. Uh, of course, we will go to the social networks and all that stuff, but let's try to get information from, from source code. And that's, a, that's, the idea, that's the idea of this talk, to give you some tips. So that's, 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 that will be the talk, so we will see. So my name is Simon Roses. I'm uh, founder of Bullnex. Bullnex is a startup back in Spain. I used to work in Microsoft in the security team, but now I'm doing my, my own thing. I also won a DARPA, US DARPA, so I went here, I, I was invited here to the Pentagon. So it was quite interesting experience for me, being a foreign. Uh, I usually go to many conferences and talk, and so, so that's, that's pretty much all, everything. So the, the, the objective of the talk, um, can you guys hear me fine? OK. If I cough or anything, sorry about that, because I'm a bit cold. So today I'm feeling better, but yesterday and Thursday I was, I was miserable. But now, hopefully, I'm fine. Um, so I will talk a little about the, uh, some basic uh, source code analysis. It will be quite, quite basic. We will not go into too much detail how to do that. And then it will be more, more open source intelligence tactics, well, stuff uh, we are looking for. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with those. But. So how we can apply those to, to source code. So the agenda will be like an introduction. We will, we will cover uh, what we're going to achieve and why. We will start doing some open source intelligence on, on, the, on some developers and the, on the source code. And then we will, we will do some conclusions. Yeah, this is something I've been uh, working. So this is work in progress, and I thought, okay, let's go, let's go to the to the Recon, uh, um, to the Recon Village in, in Defcon and and show some ideas I'm working on, and hopefully people we can have a nice discussion after so with some beers that always helps, and how we can improve this. This, uh, this I think is quite a, a new field. I haven't seen much people talking how to do open source intelligence and, and in source code and also how to do uh, developer profiling and all that stuff in source code. There's some research on that, but still it's an it's interesting field to get into. And so, so, okay, so I will show you what I'm working on, but I'm sure there's much more things we, uh, we can done. So, so hopefully people can come up with some nice ideas and we can uh, improve those. So introduction, so, I mean, that's, uh, I guess I'm, most of you are familiar with that, right? He was uh, one of the famous, uh, Stephen Balmer, uh, when he was in Microsoft, not anymore, but when he was there, he gave him a speech there, and he, he, I have seen him in person, and he's, he's always like energy, uh, quite insane, actually, but funny. <laughs> Uh, and here's the, it's one of the famous talks he was giving, and he was saying developers, 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 right? Uh, of course, in Microsoft, it's one of the best, most important things, right? In the company, the end software company. So for many companies, it's the same, right? So, so yeah, we will, in this case, uh, we, will, we, think, uh, um, we will target, the idea is to target the developers. We want to get information through the developers. Um, Why developers? I mean, I'm a developer myself, so 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 I think um, is why developer. I think it's quite interesting, right? Uh, of course, this is only applies to companies who develop software, right? If the company doesn't have any developers, this is not going to help. But uh, but uh, there are more more people, more companies having their own developer stuff, right? So many, most of the time, uh, developers are really technic are technical people, but not uh, security savvy. That's, that's true. I, love, I know a lot of well, there are really good developers. They are not into too much security. So that's that's perfect for us when we are doing uh, open source intelligence. We we can we can take some benefit there. And also developers, uh, from my point of view, of course I'm a, I'm a, I'm a developer and I do a few things. So I guess I'm not uh, I'm biased for that. But I guess, but most, in most companies. Okay, they are not like um, decision makers most of the time, but but quite often they are influencers. So they can inf they, they help high management uh, which, where we should go with technology. So there are people. So they, those guys are, are influencers. So that's 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 good. They have some certain uh, power in in the company. Perfect. And also they usually have access to information and systems. So that's perfect. Uh, they can they can go to they have maybe access to information or systems that other people in the company don't, don't have. Sometimes they have too much information because they are developing and they, okay, I need 
full access to the system where you don't need that, but most companies, okay, you get everything. So that's perfect. So, okay, that's, that's quite convenient for us. And of course, uh, there are habits there, right? I mean, you guys are developers, you know, we love science fiction. Who doesn't, right? If you don't, you are in the wrong room, I guess. Anime, a lot of people uh, go for anime. Porn, I mean, of course, right? Not only developers, I guess, but that, that's something we can, we can exploit. And of course, beer, right? That's some things that, that the developers love. Uh, and we can benefit, I mean, we can exploit that, right? And we are, we are getting information, and then we are going to do more like social engineering attacks. I'm not going to talk about social engineering attacks here because that's not what I want. But after I, I pull up all the information I need, I, can, I, can, I know information about the developers, and I can focus on those areas that chances are I will be able to, to attract his attention uh, through these habits. And that's quite common to see that. So the methodology I like to follow, um, instead of just going, for example, I have to target a, a company, right? We usually start with the domains, the IPs. Uh, maybe, hopefully, I can do some Google searches, tend to find some emails and stuff like that. That's usually the best, most of us start, right? OK, so the, the way I went is, OK, I have to target a company. Uh, probably at, at this point, I don't know anyone there, but Hopefully, I can go and check if they have any GitHub reports or something like that. Okay, so let's go to the to the reports and start downloading those. So I will start downloading the reports, the code reports, and now everybody, uh, the GitHub is a huge thing these days, right? So that's the place I will go to start to start there, and then I will start looking for open source uh, patterns in in code. So I will do some of the things I usually do in in Google searches and stuff like that, but applying into source code. And after that, I have a bunch of information there. Of course, I will just go more traditional way with, with social networks and different tools and stuff, right? So that's, that's the way I, I will, uh, I'm going with this. Of course, with things we can, look at, look at, we can search in, in uh, the patterns, we can start searching in, in the code, right? We have some of the classic things uh, usually we do we in, in Google searches or with different tools, right? We look for APIs. Domain names, uh, URLs, emails, well, credit cards, maybe in source code sometimes, and phone numbers. We can also find phone numbers. So there's a bunch of different information there. Uh, we can start pulling out in source code uh, usually. And and more, more, I've been uh, testing from I've been doing code reviews for a long time. So actually now these days, are people are starting to put in more comments and nicer in in in, in the source code, and that's quite nice for us. If you t start looking old code, pretty much there's no, no comments or anything. But as, so, so that for us right now, more, most modern code is quite perfect. And actually, things we can start looking, looking into source code as well is Twitter alias. Uh, that's not, not so common. Actually, when you go to the GitHub report, people usually put, put the alias there. So it's perfect. Now I have that information. I can start doing more things. But usually in the source code, I haven't seen so, so often, people usually they put their name and maybe the email, but not so often the, the Twitter alias. But that's, at least, but that's something we start we should start looking at. And of course, the comments. That's um, it depends how well people write their comments and, um, and in detail and stuff like that. But sometimes we can also find some interesting piece of information in the comments. So that's the thing I, I will start looking in, into into source codes. So. Um, right, give me a source code, right? So usually we don't have any documentation. Or I don't care about that. In this case, usually when you ask, when, you, when, you, when I do code reviews, I usually ask documentation, but usually they don't give me any. So I'm used to read code. So and in this case, it's perfect. In this case, in this case we, will, we download the repos, and now we have to focus on the, on the, on the source code. So yeah, we will start uh, reading the source code. I mean, it doesn't mean it doesn't need. We, actually, we don't need to re really read the source code. We will do some search there, so we don't have to go through the code. It's up to you. It depends what you're looking for. And here we can start some examples, right? Uh, here we have a, we start doing some. For example, I have a, here a target. Uh, it can be a person, a company. But now, for example, looking this, this is the header. I'm opening this this uh, program. This is the American Fuzzy Lab. It's a faster, a very popular faster. OK, so just looking by the header, uh, that's quite common that people write headers into, into the source code. This is a C, a C program. 
as you can see at the end, uh, flanalyze.c, it's a C program. Uh, but now, for example, here, for example, I'm, I'm supposed to do target this company, whatever. But now I have like three pieces of information I can start work. Uh, so I downloaded this their repo, and now I know, for example, I have a name, I have an email address, and I have a company. So from this, I just, just I got, just got three pieces of information. Now I can uh, okay, I can start getting that that information. I can start work, keep going and get more more info. So if I just look at the header, now I have three things. By just downloading this uh, code, I can start I can start applying more uh, techniques. Same here. Now I have downloaded the uh, AirCAC. Uh, AirCAC. Uh, source code, and again, I have actually, um, and now it's the same. I have several pieces of information that are quite interesting. There's, uh, we can see there's somebody, uh, Christopher, start in 2004, 2005, how he started the project, but now uh, Thomas has taken over. So we can see there's a relationship. There's two, those, those two guys have been working on the same project, and, and one of them took the over. Okay, that's, we're starting to create relationships. So that's interesting, you guys know. In social networks and so like we do a lot of relationship uh, analysis. So now we start making uh, relationships there. And right now I'm doing this in my, in my mind, but we can start uh, writing that uh, down. And also we can see there's uh, more people there that are mentioned. So I have more names. So I can start looking, okay, there's people in relationship, then I feel maybe I can go to social, different social networks and start seeing they are following each other or what they say, they are friends or not. So I, I'm, I'm here starting relationships. Uh, we want to move other type of like social engineering attacks or whatever. Uh, probably with these guys, it's not going to work. But that's just an, an example, right? But that's the, the, the way I will start. So, okay, so now we have starting names and relationships. So that's good. So now we have uh, uh, some, some information I can start work, work with. So I guess uh, some, some tools, right? At the end, it's all about the tools, right? So in this case, um, uh, I'm going to cover some different tools we can start uh, using. There are many more, but I just some of the most I, I use. And I'm sure in time I will add more. That, that's for sure. And some of the tools I'm using have to improve a lot as well. So, but at least we, we so. But there are some tools we can start using uh, right away. So I think they are nice. Okay, one of the first tools I like is uh, GitHubRank.com. And it's, quite, it's a nice tool to give you a ranking of the different uh, reports in, in GitHub. So we can, for example, uh, this is, uh, I told, uh, I gave me the rank of the, all the top, top project for GitHub in related to C language. And of course, the first one is uh, Linux source code with uh, Torvalds there, right? So that's quite, that's quite interesting. And this site can help me to start getting, uh, if I'm looking for, for particular reports, I can see how popular how popular they are and, and people are downloading or stuff like that. So okay, that's a good start to get a feeling of, of the popularity of this repo. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. I'm I'm targeting a, a company to to look for open source intelligence and I start looking at repos that doesn't have any any value. I'm just wasting my time. So yeah, that's a good way to start to get some feeling of the of the popularity of the repo. Okay, cool. So you can see there is a lot of interesting stuff there. Um, another tool I like is uh, Grip Wrap. Anyone familiar with this tool? It's, that was released a couple of years ago. Actually, the tool, the idea of the tool is to reconnaissance uh, GitHub repos for private keys and credentials and stuff like that. But it gives you more information we can use for a, for a more open source intelligence approach. Uh, so the tool looks for credentials and private keys and different stuff. So it's, it's quite nice to, to use. Um, for, for our purpose to, to start. And this is the, 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 the tool. Uh, it's quite, it's a, yes, uh, it, it will go to a repo and start downloading those uh, repos and the users and, and, and some information that's quite interesting for me. So this is the uh, UI of the, of, the, of the tool. It's a web, uh, web application, so it's quite nice. So uh, let, me, let me show you. OK, let's go there. I have it running here locally. Okay. Come on. 
the one. Uh, because I don't have any connection, it's time to connect uh, a side, so it will time out. Well, actually, right, well, hopefully when it's time out, it will give me the images. The tool, what it does, it, it will start showing uh, the, all, this is a, uh, uh, different repos of, of uh, usually the way it works, you will give, you will give the tool uh, here. Um, you go to a new, new assessment and it will ask you for a, like a organization name or a repo and it will go there and, and pull out the information there. Okay. So well, now it's time to connect. It's not connecting. Okay. So actually here by the name, I, uh, I start pulling some repos. Usually when, this, uh, when it has connection here, it will show you the images. Now it's trying to connect Externally, and I have the with a turn off. I don't know why, but uh, so now it's, it's not showing the image. But anyways, I, I pretty much know that. So first, first one is the repo for Raspberry, uh, ID, ID software, PLC. Those are some popular uh, repos. So I, I started getting I've also Nmap, uh, Metasploit, just to give me an idea uh, of the people. If we were, for example, for the first one, let's go there. Yeah, here the tool, as I say, is looking for credential, credential, uh, private key. So that's so you guys have uh, your company uh, GitHub reports. It's a nice tool just to make sure you don't have not published any, any credential or anything like that. But I'm not using I'm not using the tool right now in that sense. What I'm looking for is uh, it will uh, is the user approach. That's something I interest. I don't know if we're going to show me the pictures. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's not showing me the pictures because it's a connection. Trying to connect there. Okay. I didn't check that, but so, but I can prepare just in case. Okay. So I put the video because it's trying to connect all the time and not show any pictures. So just in case, I, I did a small video because just, this is definitely you need to know. So this is a, so when you have the reports, it's showing you the pictures. And the interesting things is start showing me the users and what pieces of code they have been working. So that's nice. I have now I have information. I, I start seeing relationships there. Well, this is a, one of the reports. ID software with the Doom game. Who doesn't love the game, the Doom, right? From the old days. And we will take a look in a little bit as well at the Doom. So here we have some some reports and map, uh, Metasploit and stuff. I don't think that's the original Metasploit, but. Anyways, it's uh, nice to take a look. So yeah, we can see the, the different pictures. And pictures can tell, tell us a lot of information there. Um, okay, if we go to, um, to the Raspberry uh, repo, we can see all the files here. But as I say, I'm not really interested in that at the moment. Well, when I'm looking for vulnerabilities, of course I am. But right now, I'm more interested in the users. What information I can get, I can get from those users, and that tool give me is quite convenient. For example, this is uh, one of the developers, Damien. I can click, and now it's giving me, it's giving me some info there. Move there. Okay, so and now I have a name, I have a place he's working, a location, and a Twitter, Twitter account. So now I have a bunch of information. I, I can keep going and start targeting more and more uh, this, this user, right? So that's, that's quite convenient for me. And of course, the, the, funny thing, the nice of the tool is that all information is, is put into PostgreSQL server. So everything, what you see here, is stored in a SQL server. So you can also make your own queries and, and search for info. So that's quite, that's quite convenient. I find this tool quite, quite, quite nice. It's a simple tool, but very nice. So now I have the Twitter account. I can do more things, but we'll do it in, in a little bit. Okay, I can I can like look the pictures and give me an idea of the of the this is, this should be a fun guy I guess. Okay, I have a mail, mail address. Yeah, of course I, I can I can I should I can go to Google Google and do some searches and stuff like that. But right now I want to avoid that be, be for, for a reason. Actually, there are more uh, counterintelligence companies creating fake fake information on social networks and all that stuff. And they monitor those sites. But right now, the repos are not that monitored. So now I'm getting a lot of info without going to, for social networks at the moment. So trying to avoid those uh, content intelligence companies. So that's one of the things I, I'm, I'm trying with this research. 
so yeah, I have location there, and I can start uh, getting pulling this info and and, and use other well-known tools as, as we use with 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 this, right? So it's quite convenient. Okay, so that was the GitHub repo. I, th I found this tool quite quite nice. It's not showing me the pictures. No. Well, there were a few more pictures I wanted to show, but I cannot do that. So I didn't tell without connection. I was all the time connected, so I didn't, I didn't realize I need connection for that. But anyway, just go and that is easy, very easy to set up. So I was, uh, that, was, that was good because usually open source tools are a pain in the ass. But that one is quite easy to install and use. So, so go give it a try. It's, it's, a, it's a nice tool. OK, so the only thing is in Ruby, but that's the only thing I can complain of. Uh, so now, uh, okay, so that was a uh, uh, git drop. So a nice tool to start getting some information of the users and the report and, co and connections. There's, of course, there's a lot of uh, crawlers, and I, there are many more. That's some of, some of the uh, crawlers I have seen. And writing your own clone is also easy. It's not that hard, I mean. So, so if you don't want to use Git wrap, you can just, for example, go this. The first two, the first two are Python based, and the, the other one, um, I think, is in, ja in, in JavaScript. So I mean, there are many more. I think there are so, some Ruby crawlers. So, so there is a lot of people who have been releasing uh, GitHub crawlers. We, we can use, and we don't want to use the Git wrap tool before seen before. We can uh, use those crawlers and pull the. Or we can also do a clone Git clone that works too. But that allow us to, to do a lot of uh, uh, repos at the same time, right? So some, some of the tools we can, we can start using, especially if we want to automatize things. OK. So another thing I've been working uh, lately, and that's funny thing for, I mean, we're in DevCon, so everything, uh, I guess everything is allowed. But anyways, and just to make sure, um, if any, hopefully you guys don't get offenses. It's, it's not, it's, it was not me, it's the source code. So. Uh, so don't get offense or anything like that, but you will be surprised what you can see in source code. And the idea for, the, for this is to look for bad, bad words in the, in, the, in the source code, because um, this is some basic uh, develop, developer profiling. I want to get a feeling how these guys feel. Um, uh, I want to be, is this guy angry or not? Um, and, and source code is, uh, so I've been working in, in, usually in Twitter it's quite common to do that, the sentiment, sentiment analysis, uh, we'll talk about a little bit. And I the same thing is into, into source code. Uh, that's a bit, a bit tricky, that we have to still, uh, it needs more work, for sure. But yeah, so we will give it a, so I will show you a, a few things, right? So if you look into the Linux uh, source code, uh, this is for real. This is uh, what you can find in the Linux in, in the Linux uh, source code. So you can see, I, I guess at some point uh, I can move with this. I don't. I'm not sure. I, uh, so you can see at, at the between 3.6 uh, versions there, two six nine and three. So something happened. Because I don't know what happened there. I guess there was. I don't know what happened there, but there was a lot of uh, shit and crap and everything, pretty much. So I guess they were working on something new. I guess. But you can see that, you can see that there, yeah. There. So there was a lot of angriness there going on. And the thing is just going up. So I guess it's not stopping, but that's, that's funny. That gave me an idea what's going on with those people, right? So yeah, and, but everything, everything is not that bad. I mean, it's not, it's not only bad words. You can also find good words. Okay, so that's, that's fine, right? So we have some love, we have some good, nice, and sweet, and, and kiss, right? But looking, looking at both things, we, we can see more angriness than happiness. So we should, we should be concerned about that. I don't know. But yeah, no, so not everything is bad. So, so, so that's good. If you go to that, uh, that URL, you will find more funny, funny metrics and like this one with just related to the Linux kernel. So it's, it's quite funny. OK. So let's do the same for the, for the reports we are working on. One other thing I've been, uh, when I've been doing this is you guys into more uh, data science with all the, all the process in data science with information. There is the process we have to do data cleaning, right? You get information, but not all, not all information you need is, is what, uh, not, you don't need all the information you collect. You have to do some cleaning. And in the circle, it's going to happen big time. 
Uh, because, for example, in the case of the comments, you get, you get so much crap, uh, you don't need that, uh, it, and it, it doesn't have any value for us. Like, for example, in comments, you can also find code. Uh, we don't want that. We don't get pretty much any, any results for that. If we're going to do more like sentiment analysis or anything like that, or it's not going to help. Uh, some code, uh, sta code statements, uh, nothing I can use. We also have, there's a lot of uh, bad, char bad characters, like uh, dollar sign equal and all that stuff. We should remove that. The same way we do Twitter analysis, usually remove the hashtag and all that stuff. Uh, the same thing. So, and also, when I was looking around, there's just a lot of uh, uh, useless uh, text, especially with, with license. People put all the license in the source code and doesn't give me anything that, because that code is not from the de developer, so I don't need that. And we can see a lot of that in, into, into the source code. So that's things. So right now, I'm, I'm um, um, something we have to improve a lot because uh, I've been writing some tools and stuff, but this. This is uh, much more uh, to be done because there is so much stuff in the comments I, I don't need. So it's, uh, right now, it's something we, we, we have to improve, how to uh, get comments that I can, I can really use. So for example, in here, uh, for the comment, for example, we have uh, here, I don't know, uh, let's see. For example, we can do, this is one of the tools I use. Tools, and projects. Um, let's do, I don't know, which one? Mmap, I guess. Let's see. And now this, uh, excuse me, because, ah, because I didn't do the slash B. Okay, now what, what the tool did, it created a, oh, something around there. Ah, okay, my bad. Okay, there. So what I did is I used a, a small tool I wrote, and that tool I have to improve a lot. But now it's, it's going to the repo, I download it, and I'm telling, uh, look for C files, and pull out all the comments. So yeah, so as you can see, uh, there's so much stuff there. It's not like tutors. Like if you go to tweet, you can start downloading all the tweets and, and, do some, and take those tweets and analyze them. Here we have to do a lot of cleaning. And as, that's a thing I'm working, but there's still much more work to do because you can see we have uh, so much stuff that doesn't mean anything. For example, we have a license here, so we have to remove that. So there's a lot of data cleaning we have, we have to perform to really, to get, to really get some, some uh, information I, I can use or get a feeling of the, of the developers. So yeah. So that's a, a work in progress. But just to give you an idea, what things we have, we have to do, right? And you can see this, yeah, numbers here, probably doesn't mean, doesn't have any value for me. So, yeah, so sometimes you can see comments that are really interesting, but I don't know where I can find any of those right now, but yeah, just looking around, so that's, that takes time. So this, right now, is, is, is a bit manual process. Uh, we have to start, usually uh, what I do is I pull all this to a CBS, and then I can open with different tools and, and start removing some things, but it's a quite time consuming at, at the moment, right? If any, anyone have a good idea as to manage this, perfect. Just let me know. I'm working on different things to, to speed up this process, but right now it's, it's a bit uh, time consuming. Well, data cleaning is always is. Even in data science, anyone familiar with that? It's a hard, hard process, right? No, not everything can be atomized. It's hard sometimes. Okay. As you can see, we can, we, can, we can get so much comments and stuff. The only thing is we have to find the information we want there. There's, chances are we can find something we will, uh, can be used, but we have to find it first. But at least we start narrow, narrow things, right? I use source code. Now from the source code, I'm getting comments. Now I can start. Uh, I'm just narrowing the information I want. OK. So you can see there's a lot of comments here and stuff. So yes being there and, and taking some time to, to see what's going on. Okay, so that, that's, we can find some interesting, in, in, in some interesting things in, in the comments. But let's move on and hopefully it will be more interesting. So uh, another tool, uh, I developed this tool, it's a source code intelligence tool. I use this tool to compile projects. Um, what I do is, is, is an analyzer there. It's a tool that runs inside GCC. When you are building projects, it will pull out intelligence from the source code. So it only works in GCC and for C code. 
But at, at the same, I'm starting putting. Uh, so it's a, so now has become a framework. So I'm adding more tools into into the into the um, into the framework called um, Profaniter and Ausinter There, so Profanity will look for uh, bad words in in the in the code, and Ausinter will look for uh, open source intelligent patterns in the source code. And those two are completely to, uh, to, uh, language agnostic. It will you, it will go it will go for the files. Analyzer has to be run inside GCC for C code, but Ausinter and Profaniter uh, is completely agnostic. So those are the tools we can start uh, using to get some information. Okay, so for the functions, um, so I'm not going to run them because uh, well, profanity is not that uh, is uh, profanity is more or less fast depending on the size of the code or the code base, but uh, Ausinter takes uh, quite a lot to run. So so I will skip that. I, I've I've already run them in several reports to get some results. So for example, uh, let's do the Doom. That's a profanity. So what I did is I run a profanity tool and create a JSON file with all the bad words, and now I, I use another tool inside the, in the framework to generate a report. And this is the the Doom uh, source code from the from the game, right? And we can start seeing some uh, some some words there, right? So don't get offense uh, if you see something uh, there. So yeah, we can see there is a hello dot sack uh, fuck shit. As bastard, um, sax, asshole, I don't know. You go there to the, to the, and sometimes, and sometimes you go there and, and check this, the file, you will, maybe you can find a comment there that somebody, they, sometimes they talk about somebody else in the company, <laughs> or this code sucks, and actually sometimes this, they, they also tell that, shit, this code sucks because it's hard, or they have a vulnerability, or a bug, or whatever, so that's also convenient for us. No, right now I'm, I'm using uh, two dictionaries, English and uh, I was just looking um, for English and Spanish, but in the in the Tintorera is there's dictionaries for I think 15 languages from Chinese. Uh, I don't know. There's a, a lot. The only thing is for speed because I was only interested in, in English and Spanish. I remove all of them, but uh, you download the tool, you have all the dictionaries. The only thing is it takes a bit longer to run because it's looking all the all the all the words. Yeah. But it's pretty much, yeah, I mean, this is a, it was a U.S. company it's in, in Texas. Uh, so, yeah, they were the, pretty much, so I guess, all the bad words are in English. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, so there is a bunch of the, there. And, and the funny thing is, uh, I guess when things are moving forward, the, things are getting uh, nastier. Because this is the code for Doom, last, uh, for, the, for the Doom. And as you can see, they are not that much. So, okay, that's... That's, that's okay, actually, in terms of uh, bad words. If you go to, um, for example, Quake 3. From the same, from the same people, and that's a... Uh, uh, so you can see, that actually, there are, uh, there are, yeah, there's a lot of X there, but there, there looks, uh, there are more, there uh, Yeah, so there's, there's a bunch of words. So there are more, actually. So this is a newer game, but the newer game is, is several years old. But they use more bad words in the, in the game than before, right? So I guess they are more stressed. I don't, I don't know. Hardcore, I don't know. When you start looking at, looking at those files, it's very funny to see where that war is and what they're saying, what they're saying there. So that started giving me a feeling about these guys. <laughs> yeah, that was a funny. Actually, you go to there, to the caster fact, that one I look it up because I say, what's going on here? Actually, it's a function there, and they say, this function is a caster fact. It has to be fixed. So when I'm looking for vulnerabilities, that's a place I will go, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so that was a profanity too, right? So, that, okay, that's, um, so that's quite nice to start looking and get a feeling, right? Uh, so now we can do, actually there was another, uh, another thing I did uh, before. Let me actually, so, so what I did is I started uh, taking some of the developers of these reports. Uh, so I was looking at these reports. Uh, I didn't show you, uh, for example, TensorFlow, you guys are familiar with uh, Google Framework? And actually there's pretty much no bad words in TensorFlow. And the, the code base is huge. 
So I don't know if the people in Google are nice or they are some kind of backward policy. I don't know, but it's, I was surprised about that. It's a huge code base, and pretty much there's no bad words. So I don't know if there's some policy or not. But for example, looking on those, uh, those are, what I did here is I downloaded uh, those are, those are the, the tweets from several uh, developers. Uh, and I did, I downloaded the tweets, and I, I submitted to a um, sentiment analysis API to give me a feeling of these guys of the angriness. Can you guys guess who is the most angry person here? No guess there? Excuse me, who? Who? Carmack. Actually, that's right. That's your own Carmack. That's the developer of Doom and Quake. If you go downstairs, so those are the tweets. Uh, and that's, actually easy. that's very easy to do with Python script and take the tweets and submit it to an API for, for analysis. And it's free, actually, so that's, I always do that. So here you go to, so now I have some statistics, so let me move that there. So yeah, we can see quite, actually this guy is more negative than positive. So that's quite interesting uh, to give me an idea of the, when I'm profiling this, this uh, developer. No wonder there's so much wild, wild buggers in, in the games, in the source code. So that's quite interesting to do, right? Uh, we have also the B BLC, because you know, guys, BLC, there's also some different type of vulnerabilities there. So I want to, when I'm looking uh, for vulnerabilities in, in software, it's always nice to get a feeling of how these guys are feeling. Yeah, okay, more or less neutral, okay. So yeah, you can do that, those type of things to just to give me an idea of the, of the, of the developer. So I think it's quite nice. And then we have also the, the open source uh, patterns. At the end, uh, there's one of the tools in, in the Tintorera framework, does inter that pretty much do this, but, but also you can do this, uh, do, you can also do it uh, by your own. Uh, so at the end, we will look for IP links, emails, and different stuff in the source code. I'm not, I, I don't want to go to the Google or anything to start doing searches at the moment. I'm looking on the source code. And you will find a lot of information there, uh, quite interesting, doing the same thing. So for example, here there is a TensorFlow, the repo in TensorFlow. So just a regular expression there. I'm looking for, for uh, email address. So now I have a bunch of uh, address. Of course, I have to do some cleaning there. That's easy to do. And now I can take all those uh, email address and use all the different other tools, uh, other tools, open source intelligence, and put those email and start getting uh, information about it. So it's quite nice. And the good thing is, uh, many times people in source code, they forget stuff, they put more links, or internal IPs, uh, so that's quite convenient. So now I have uh, inter uh, information about more sensitive information that chances of doing Google searches, I might or might not find them. Okay, well, that's, that's uh, some of the queries, I mean, that's, I don't know. So that's not too, too excited there, but that's, for example, I can, I can post those you know, online, but those are some of the queries I use, and the, you, you can also find them in the Tintorera tool. That one is for look for email address, um, uh, IPs, and stuff like that. So don't worry, I can post those. Those are my simple uh, regular expressions to search for, for information, right? Okay, and now, for example, so now I can have uh, links, IPs, domain names, names of the developers, uh, so a bunch of information now. Okay, I, after some doing some cleaning, I can start using my regular uh, open source tool that we all, the open source, uh, open source intelligence tools we all have, right? I can start putting those information into Maltego, ReconNG, Data Spread, and of course, uh, some cost, custom uh, scripting tools, right? I have a bunch of uh, custom tools. I, I use all this information I get from the source code, pass it to, to those uh, scripts. And now we can just go uh, a regular approach in the open source intelligence or send. So yeah, so for an point of view, I think source code is gold because it's many times it's, uh, uh, people don't pay too much attention; they just submit to the to the reports. So in, so in source code, uh, we can find open source intelligence. We can find email links, uh, IPs, and stuff like that. We can sometimes find sensitive information. People forget uh, tokens, credential, and stuff like that. Uh, so we can also, so, so that's nice. We can also do comments and sentiment analysis. Uh, we have to do a lot of cleaning on the comment, but we can still do some, some uh, so getting a feeling of the developers, and of course we can also find vulnerabilities. So yeah, so in my opinion, source code is really nice. 
It's a, it's a gold mine. The only thing is we have to harvest that. And of course, uh, from, from talking with people, yeah, there's a lot of, I was mentioned before, there's a lot of, uh, there are several companies doing uh, content intelligence and stuff like that. They put fake uh, data in social networks and other stuff to, to, to make uh, open source intelligence harder. But core repos at this time, from my understanding, people don't, don't, don't pay so much attention. So we can go to the reports and start uh, getting info without going to the social network or not, so not making any attention to go to the social network, for example. And pretty much we can get a lot of information as well. So yeah, so source code is, is gold. So next steps, uh, there's a lot of work to be done. So yeah, we have to, um, for sure we have to do some, um, actually it's, when we're talking, I don't know, we'll see, I don't know. Uh, I, I was talking with, um, uh, with Data Spirit, and actually they were saying that they want, to, uh, they want to also add some, some stuff like this into Data Spirit. I, I think that's, that's quite nice, right? So yeah, so we have to improve this, this field, I guess. So we need more uh, improvement tools, that's for sure, and more automation, that's for sure. Uh, for the comments, there's a lot of, uh, with the cleanup, Analysis and classification of the comments, so that's, that's quite nice. And I didn't go too much into detail into developer um, profiling, but also working on that. And the idea is you, could, you take source code and look in different type of uh, parameters. I can, gi I can give you uh, an idea of, uh, of profiling the de developer looking for how he writes, uh, what's his style of coding, and we, we can find similar coding, coding of the developer in other places. So that's a developer profiling, and that's an interesting field. But it's, it's not, uh, it's related, more or less related, but it's another thing. So yeah, so these are the things we, we have to improve in this thing. And of course, we should uh, start adding or uh, data exploit or record ng or other tools, uh, start adding this uh, source code analysis and get information into, into those tools. So yeah, that's, um, so I mean, that's pretty much uh, the, the talk. I don't know how I am in time. I'm good or not, or what time is it? I don't know. I'm also, okay. So you guys uh, have any, any questions, comments? Yes, please. I, uh, I noticed that you posted the source code as a zip file. So that you get, yes. You can't run your code against your code. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, that's called, <laughs> that's open source ops. <laughs> we also no, that's, to your code. yeah, 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 I know, I know, I have, I have to fix that, yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys have any more questions? If you guys want to talk about open source intelligence or something like that, probably I will be in the bar in the afternoon, so come and, and grab me for a beer and, and we can talk. So, you guys have uh, any more questions? If not, thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure being here. And, and no, thanks. <laughs>